Hi everybody. This is my introduction. This is my desk where I do everything, almost. Ah, that's the window behind it. This is my kitchen. Um, there's my cat's water bowl. And this is how messy it becomes. And I just want to show you this because this is all the space I have. I don't have a fancy studio. Um, I don't have a big easel or lots of drawers to store tons and tons of art supplies. Um, this is it, and it's probably probably more space than you have, right? Um, I don't know, do you work at your kitchen table too? Maybe you do. But I'm lucky because my husband um, is also a creative person and we just sort of understand um, here, my kitchen up there. <laughs> and so this is basically where I work and I'm getting ready to clean this up. I'll show you my office. Um, these are all paintings from friends. <laughs> and this is my office. <clears throat> this is where I do all my writing and my journaling. There's my notebooks right there, always on my desk. A little bit of washi tape um, yeah so everything I do is pretty much right here there's my bookshelf and my cat that's my reading chair and more books and then my living room so it's not very fancy <laughs> and I'm showing you this because sometimes at least for me when I watch people on YouTube and and stuff and I see their fancy uh, studios and all their stuff and how organized and everything it makes me feel kind of bad about myself <laughs> that I'll never be a grown-up artist but the truth is is I've accomplished a lot right here in this mess and I'm gonna clean it up probably later today it, I do it every few months because it just gets crazy again I'm not the world's most organized person um, but I create a lot in this space. I've written three books. I've made many, oh, something like, I mean, probably eight, 800 art instruction videos from here. I've done a lot. So you can too. You don't need anything more than your kitchen table and a few boxes of supplies. I have too many supplies. This is all of them, but I have too many and I would like to go through them and get rid of some. We don't need a lot. Yeah, so I just wanted to introduce you to my space. And I was doing this last night, just playing around on a sketchbook. So I'm going to stop filming now and set up so I can show you some cool stuff. Hi, I also wanted to say hi from me. You probably won't see me very often because I'm not really comfortable in front of a camera. I'm not here to show you my fancy artist wardrobe. I wear sweatshirts and jeans. I wear scarves because I hate my neck. <laughs> um, you you might know what that's like. Um, yeah, so you probably won't see very much of me like this, but I wanted to say hi anyways and introduce myself. Um, I'm Kateri. I'm 60 years old. I'm a grandma. I have lots of grandkids. That's my favorite thing in the world is being a grandma. Um, I'm married to my sweetheart. We live in a beautiful piece of land um, in rural New York, sort of rural New York. Yeah, it's a nice life, but I'm not really here to show you those things. I'm here to show you what I put on paper, and um, I hope that's not a disappointment, right? I just think it's more important for me to show you what I do on my desk than what my house looks like and what I look like and what my clothes look like and all of that stuff. So that's it. All right, I'm gonna set up now and do the important stuff. So here we are. Um, the last time I showed up, I was in, I was sort of reviewing the sketchbook and I gotta say, I really do like it. Um, I've done a few more things with it and I really do like it. This is the Strathmore 400 watercolor sketchbook. It's great. The only thing I'm not crazy about is that it closes on itself. So I've got to clip it open, but really in the long run, that's just not a very big deal. But the one that I super, super love is the Strathmore 500 mixed media. 
And this one um, has just, I, I, I've been using these for, I mean, probably close to a decade now. I've always used them. And um, this one, we just finished a project on Patreon where we painted a tea set. Um, and I use this sketchbook. And, and I think, I don't know if I've talked about it here, but for my patrons I have, I really, really um, want to do everything in a sketchbook. Now, I'm tired of having random sheets of paper lying around. And I'm not really a canvas artist. I I don't know. It's just it's just not my thing. But, um, but you can do anything on paper, so why not, right? And why not do it within a book? And when the book's finished, then I can close it and store it on the shelf with my other books. And I have this sort of beautiful array of my work for years and years. And I wish I had started this from the very beginning, but I didn't. But now I am. And I just I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. I was looking at these. These are two um, projects that we recently did on Patreon. I think it's so cool. These are blindfolded um, self-portraits with mixed media materials. Aren't they great? Love them. So um, today I wanted to talk to you about crayons and stuff. And I am mostly known as a watercolor artist. I've been painting with watercolor for my whole career. It's how I started. Um, I'm self-taught. Um, so I do things a little bit wacky sometimes, but um, it's just how I've d discovered myself and, and taught myself. And I share everything I've learned in my lessons here, on either on Patreon or here or wherever, in my books. But um, recently I have felt the need um, I'd say in the last couple of years to just sort of move in other directions with my work and being a little bit more expressive and um, changeable really, never static. Like I'm always exploring and pushing myself into new realms. And one of the things that I've really, really enjoyed is mixed media work. And what mix, mixed media isn't anything specific, but it just means when you combine two or more mediums together in one piece of work, right? That doesn't have to be anything that specific. So I'm just gonna um, put this here. I don't know if I can, it's the thing with this ske these sketchbooks. I just don't have enough room, <laughs> I need to clean. So anyways, um, I, I just want to show you some of the things that I've been playing with. And I've got more coming, I, I ordered some oil pastels. I've never really used them before except for having a couple random ones here and there. And I ordered a really inexpensive set on Amazon. They were $11 and they're, when I, when I receive them, I will share them with you for sure. But um, I wanted to pull out, let's see if I can pull these out. For some reason it's not coming out. There we go. So soft pastels are something entirely different, right? Soft pastels are chalky and dusty and luscious, and I love them. And I have a few of those too. But what I want to talk about now are the more waxy cousins or oily cousins of the soft pastels. And those are either oil pastels or crayons or sometimes water-soluble waxy pastels, right? Some of these you'll be very familiar with. For instance, the Neo Colors are hugely, hugely popular in the art um, community. These are the Neo Color 2s. They're water-soluble wax pastels. I don't have that many of them. I only have a handful, but I love them. I really, really enjoy them. Um, another one is the um, Art Crayon, Mixed Media Art Crayon. These are by Marabou. Other brands have them, so it's the same kind of thing kind of like the Neo Pastels, just more, more plastic, which I don't love. And then I've got these Manly crayons, which are just wax crayons. They are not water soluble. I like them okay. And then these are my small few, very small selection of Sennelier oil pastels. I'm gonna show you the colors I have. So this one is color 230 and what you notice when you use an oil pastel is they go in very thick and they're really difficult to move. So you have to put some elbow grease into it. 
Um, you can blend them out. You can blend them together, all right? And the other thing you'll notice is that they never really dry on the paper. They never really cure or get hard. Like they always stay a little bit wet and tacky and mushy. That's just the nature of the beast. And they do make fixatives for oil pastels. I don't know much about it. I'm going to learn. But um, it's the one thing that has sort of kept me from using them. So you see when I put it down, it's so textural and lovely. And I can just kind of mush it around with my fingers. Of course, you got to wash your fingers with soap and water when you're done. None of these are toxic um, pigments. I don't have toxic pigments. So that color is, I just love this color. It's, um, which color? 233? So the first one was 230, that's 233. And then I have this one, This those are Sennelier. And then I have this lovely warm brown by Dela Rowney. This is 551 Tint 4. And you notice there's a difference in the texture between the two. This one is a little drier. These are more buttery. Um, but I can also manipulate this on the page as well. This one is also Sennelier, it's color 204. It's sort of a golden green and it, it's kind of got a transparency to it. And then this one is 209, also Sennelier. So you can see, I don't have that many, right? I don't even know. I bought them at the art supply store once, just picked up a few that appealed to me. And I do use them sometimes, and I've mostly used them in watercolor landscapes where I might wanna do some marking on top to give it some dimension and texture, and that has been a beautiful thing, right? Now, in contrast, we have these manly crayons, and when you when you see these go on the paper, you see they're, they're drier, Okay, they're like they're they're not opaque right away. If I press really hard, I get more color, but they're never like textural, right? Um, I can smudge them a little bit, but nothing like these. So these have been super fun just to put little marks on things. In fact, in this picture, um, there's a few of them on here too where I've used pastels, but on this like. This blue that you see, that is Manly Crayon, right? So they work really well with things like watercolors and, um, you know, they're really fun for mark making and they do cure, right? So you don't have to, um, to worry about them staying really wet. They are completely non-toxic, safe for children, all of that. And they come in a lot of colors and they were not expensive. I wanna say they were, I've had them quite a while, but I wanna say they were under $25 for all of these. And they're very nice, they're really nice. So I can press hard and get sort of an opaque mark and I can press really softly and see the texture of the paper come through. But again, they don't really blend like an oil pastel, okay? Now, the other thing I want to say is that oil pastels like Sennelier are quite expensive. These can be like three to six dollars per stick, right? I can't afford that. <laughs> so that's why I found the really inexpensive sets on Amazon. Um, and I, I can't wait to try them. I, I can't imagine that they're going to be quite this like this, but we'll see. For my purposes, I think they're going to be fabulous. So those are the Manly Crayons, and I, I do highly recommend these. I, I think they're a lot of fun for the price. I mean, look at that one, how pretty that is. And I can get some texture, right? So if I wanted to put textural marks on something, you see how I get little chunks? Kind of reminds me of a cray paw, which I also do not have. But you can see that it's quite a bit trickier to blend them, all right, than it was with these. Some blend easier than others, I would say. All right, then we come to the Neo Pastels and um, Neo Colors. These are Neo Color 2s. I don't have Neo Color 1. I know um, that a lot of people have them and love them. Um, they are more like these, right? They're more 
uh, they're not water soluble. The Neo Color Two, the Neo Color One are not water soluble. Neo Color Two are water soluble. But I find these kind of expensive too. Um, I am on a really tight budget with art supplies this year, um, and I I don't want to spend the money to get a bigger set than this, right? So that's why I'm I'm also looking for alternatives to these that are more affordable. So these are really nice. They feel they're sort of in between the manly and the oil pastel. I mean, they can get really opaque, but they can also be very sheer. And the beautiful thing about these is if I take a little water on my finger or on a brush, they completely dissolve into, into a watercolorish effect, which is super, super fun. Super fun. So this is the assortment that I have. I have a silvery gray. I have this beautiful salmon pink. I have um, a pale yellow. I, I have to say, I wasn't that taken with the color selection with these when I went to look at them and buy the individual colors. I've had these for a few years now and I've used them so little um, up until recently. But these are the colors that I chose and this is like a more of a pale gray blue. This is a pale silvery blue. And then I've got this one here. I don't have that many. I would like to get some more. Or if you know of another brand, I would love to hear your, uh, your thoughts on that. But let's just see if I even just take a brush and just kind of play. They just melt and they do really fun things, right? So think about it this way. If you had a wonderful, let's just take some swatches here, all right? These are just watercolor swatches. And let's say I wanted to um, put some mark making on an existing watercolor painting and I could go through and I could just hit it here and there a little bit of water and dissolve it now and then or even just sprinkle water on it and let it dissolve here and there just to soften the lines you could get some really beautiful effects with these right the other thing I will say is that you can also I'm gonna do that in here uh, let me do it this way so you could draw with your crayons right Right? And then you could go in with watercolor and your lines that you use to paint with, right, are going to dissolve. So you could use them as a sketching tool. And the cool thing is, is that when you use water then, you can get some really beautiful effects when you mix it with watercolor, right? And just let them sort of all mix and mingle together. I'm not used to this brush yet, it holds a ton of water. It's not a natural fiber and so when I it just like holds the water big time. So they mix together really nicely and I think that is gonna be a lot of fun to play with them in that way. Even look at this, how they mix and mingle together and created new colors, right? So those are those. Um, I, this is that other brand. I only have one of these and I have to say, it's so beautiful, this color. Um, and it's not quite as melty as the Neo colors, but it still does melt. But what a gorgeous color. The other thing is I think for a lot of people, 
to draw, it's just like with a watercolor pencil, to draw our marks, to draw our pictures, and then wet them where we want to. We feel like we have more control, right? And for a lot of people, that's really appealing. And so that's one reason why watercolor pencils are so popular, because we can, we these are wonderful watercolor pencils. We feel like we have more control when we when we're making our marks, right? Like I could, um, I could draw leaves, right? Really, what well, you know, so much easier than painting them with watercolor. And I could color things in, right? In unusual ways. And then I can go in with water later and just slap water on it and let it do its thing, right? And we just feel like we have so much more control that way when we're actually drawing with a physical drawing implement. So I think the crayons are no different. We, you know, the water soluble crayons, we um, just have a different experience. It, it just gives us this sense of control and that is super fun. So I just wanted to talk about those things and see if you have them and what your feelings are about some of these sort of um, oil pastel mark making tools and if it's something that you might be interested in learning more about or trying. And you can also mix, right, oil pastels with these other things as they dry. You can do mark making on these two. And they work together really well, right? Once this would be dry, we could go on and make all sorts of buttery marks on them and make it super fun. So I'm just curious what you're thinking about this and if it's something you would want to explore more. Um, I have done, you know, a handful of things with them and I'm really loving them. It's more of an exploratory uh, thing for me. And I don't know, I would love to share it with you. I would love to share um, my discoveries and processes with you as I work with these tools. Um, but I'm just curious how you're feeling about them and if it's something you would be interested in. And you might have a lot of experience with them. And you could maybe give me some ideas on um, more affordable watercolor uh, pastels, the, the wax pastels, the, the water soluble ones. Also, if you know anything about watercolor markers, I would be really glad to know. All right, let me know your thoughts. And the, I think the first thing I would like to teach um, is doing a beautiful expressive landscape using watercolor and gouache and then coming on top of it with watercolor pencils and crayons and oil pastels. Let me know if you're interested. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care.